Hello, everyone. This is Karan from The Great Work. And today I have Martin Jones here with me of Holographic Breathing. And if you listen to him closely, by the end of this seminar, you will feel the bones in your skull flex and move. Martin, could you please give us an introduction to yourself and how you first came about this? Um, I, I originally, I started off as a healer and a Tai Chi teacher and Qi Kung teacher. And within all of that, the breath featured strongly. All of the Qi Kungs were breathing Qi Kungs and the Tai Chi, we did it with breathing as well. So there was always a strong emphasis in the breath and that that was kind of through the 80s onwards i was doing that and then in the 90s i also trained to be a, a cranial craniosacral therapist so and i ran trainings in that so i kind of got to understand the a whole internal structures from the cranial side but also from the energetic kind of tai chi and taoist side as well and um this all led together until towards the end of the 90s uh, i started becoming really really ill and i had no idea why i was ill i i'd in i'd been visiting some teachers in india and germany and twice I got bitten by a tick and I think both times I got picked up Lyme's disease. And I, I didn't know what Lyme's disease is and I didn't know I had it. But uh, I knew I had something that I couldn't fight off. My immune, Lyme disease is very clever. It undermines your immune system so it can't work properly. So it, you can't defeat it or it's very difficult to defeat it. And about seven years later, I was basically dying. I was going from pneumonia to bronchitis to pneumonia. I would catch every illness there was. And I was nearly dying. And I had no idea what to do. One day, I just thought, I'm going to let this disease take me. I'll go with the breath. I'll let it take me. I don't want to die, but I want to see what this disease is because I am not winning and I'm going to die soon unless I find out and it was like dying that experience was like dying and when I came out the other side there were beings there and a, a kind of a bright light and then when I came back my kundalini went off for a couple of months and I didn't put it together until later, but at the end of that couple of months, I was seeing a dentist. I only wanted, I just wanted the amalgam taken out of my mouth. Um, but he was, he started saying, well, people come to me for inlays, but what they mainly come to me for is for orthodontics to open up through the maxilla, through the whole face uh, and he said that my maxilla was pulled back my jaw was behind the maxilla so my jaw was pulled back so my tmjs were tight and that seizing up the cranium and through the whole body the orthodontics were going to be about fifteen thousand pounds and take three years and i'd lose a lot of teeth I didn't have any money by this stage. And I thought, I can do this by myself. So I started breathing into the maxilla as if it was a, a pair of, I've got a picture, I've got a picture. You can see uh, a bit of torn up picture now, but you can see how the maxillary sinuses are a bit like lungs. The roof of the mouth is a bit like the diaphragm. The jaw is more the pelvis. You see a heart in the middle there, the nasal passageways, a bit like a heart. And then the eyes relate more to the brain and higher energies. So I was breathing into this area as if it was a pair of lungs. And I was used to it from the cranial training. So if you pick up a maxilla, it's like an eggshell. It weighs next to nothing. The bones are so thin 
that it weighs it reminded me you know when you pick up the skull of a bird there's no weight to it it was like that you the and so i knew just by breathing into it there was the possibility to get this whole moving to come forwards in it in its own way and i knew from tai chi and yoga and cranial work you're far better off doing it for yourself than kind of going to somebody else to fix it so i was breathing in uh, and I was seeing a cranial practitioner at the same time. And as I was breathing in, I could feel it. So I was a cranial practitioner. I could feel it going into my brain, into the cranial fluid, and that was releasing. And I could feel these toxins releasing. And that was relieving the deep tiredness I was in because Lyme disease attacks the neural tissue in the brain and produces a lot of neurotoxins. And as I was breathing with this area, it was releasing through the cranial fluid. And I can feel that releasing out through my body. So I was really, really quite into it. And it was at this time that I learned I had Lyme's disease. And I was in the late stages of Lyme's disease. And I knew what the scenario, that's kind of dying, really or hospitalized, unable to move. It gets misdiagnosed as Parkinson's disease, MS, um, Alzheimer's disease, anything where the brain degenerates. So I knew the scenario. So I was, had a good cause to not just to have this all come forward and open up, but its connection to the brain was very clear to me, the way that I was working with it, and it was relieving the tiredness. And I've been working about two weeks, and I'd just sit in meditation, I'd just breathe and let it work through the brain, through the whole body. But in the last few days, it was just getting tighter. The energy was going into the brain, but it wasn't releasing. It was just building and building and becoming condensed. And in this meditation, it, it was getting quite painful. So I just did breathe softer and softer and softer until at a certain point, all of that energy that had built up, there was this blinding flash of light and an audible pop. Uh, and not just that energy, a channel came down as well. This whole energy released through the maxilla, through the teeth and down into the jaw. I could almost feel my teeth coming out their sockets and the whole jaw just lit up red. And it ignited a memory in my jaw and the lips came together. The tongue got pulled up flat on the roof of the mouth and on the in-breath just on its own that memory the jaw was gently opening and the jaw was gently closing with the lips closed and the tongue in place so it's this particular motion and i was thinking what how is that doing it it just automatically started doing it and as it did that the breathing i've been trying to do in this area i no longer had to try and do it anymore as this subtle motion happened in the mouth, the whole maxilla was just breathing on its own with it. I didn't have to try. The roof of the mouth was just breathing on its own with it. And the energy was going through my eyes. And it magnified the effect that was happening in my brain and the cranial fluid. And I could just feel it pouring through there. And I could feel the toxins just releasing out. I was thinking, what is this? What, what, what has just happened? And I could start feeling as the whole structures of the face started breathing, the whole cranium started breathing. I'd feel it working down the spine and through the ribs and through the arms and legs and the pelvis. It just started working through the whole body. It was orientating from the mouth but it was reflecting through the whole body. And it's very like a subtle form of suckling. That may be the memory. I think it's how we breathe in the womb. And I think it's instigated when we come out of the womb by suckling. And it's like a very subtle form of that, but with the breath. And it fits, it, it 
it engages with the breath and balances with the breath and it's just well you don't learn holographic breathing it comes to a point and it's like a memory igniting you already know how to do it um and i started getting better i started getting better from the lyme's disease without medication i never went to a doctor at that time this is 20 years ago at that time the in in the uk the only known medical cure for lyme's disease was six months of intravenous antibiotics at 150,000 pounds <laughs> which was out of my league <laughs> So I just carried on. The Lyme disease continued to get better. I went to another dentist to have my teeth. And I said, can you test my maxilla and my jaw to see if it's pulled back? He said, no, that's all fine. He said, that's all opened up forwards now. Your jaw is relaxed. Your TMJ is relaxed. And he wanted him and his wife both learn holographic breathing form because what they did test, and they tested it with everyone, these muscles around the TMJs are permanently tight and just held in everyone. He said, I was the only person that he had tested where they were completely relaxed. And they learned the holographic breathing. They tested each other and lo and behold, that had totally relaxed and opened in them. So the Tai Chi dropped away. Uh, when I put my hands on people, no longer cranial sacral therapy hand, but the energy came through from this breathing. There were spiritual guides behind it. For me, it never stopped. I would wake up in my dreams and I've been doing holographic breathing whilst I was asleep. And there were these guides telling me about the energies and how it worked inside and when I teach it, I teach every Sunday. We have webinars every Sunday. I have a free webinar every month. The energies come through. There is a spiritual content. So it is much more than just fixing your palate, yeah. getting this open. It's a holistic thing. It's for the whole body. Yeah. And so, so yeah. that was the journey. I want to reassure anyone who might be suffering from Lyme's disease or needs to detoxify or heal their body in any way that we will circle around again to that by the end of the lecture. And Martin is doing seminars this Saturday coming up and has a lot of free seminars. Um, so if you are suffering with that, there is the help available. The links will be around this video somewhere um, to circle back around to the principles of what they call orthotropics. You've heard of John Mew, Mike Mew. A lot of my audience has. Um, is tongue on the roof of the mouth and also the fact that suckling breastfeeding um, and tying that motion in is a unique thing to tying that motion into the breathing in the womb that it develops the skull the skull and it develops the jaws uh, you saw that happen yourself and you had the practitioners also agree that that happens and they were totally interested uh, you also helped a child who was looking like they needed surgery can you tell us about that? He, he, he did need surgery. Um, he was sent to me by a dentist. Um, now, he had an underbite. His jaw was a long way forwards. When someone has an underbite and their jaw is forwards, the problem isn't with their jaw. The problem is that the maxilla is held back. They've got a very moon shaped face it's hollowed in the middle and the jaw is in the right position but it's all pulled back and he had a huge underbite and he was about 12 and he'd been going to cranial osteopaths since he was four to try and fix this problem and he came to me first of all for cranial sacral therapy and i'd start to work on him and i think this is pointless he is just completely pissed off he doesn't want people working on him. Um, he's not interested in being healed. So I, I said to his mother afterwards, I said, you know, cranial work may help him, but he doesn't want to do it. And I honor that. If he doesn't want to do it, 
I'm not going to try and do it. You know, he has to engage. But I said, why don't you let him teach me? Why don't you let me teach him this breathing? He can work with it himself if he wants to do it. He won't because he felt totally intruded upon all of these people working on him. It was just intruded. And I won't intrude in any way with anybody. And so his mother asked him, he said, yes, I'd like to do that. He learned it. He was brilliant. He was a musician, so he was used to practicing. He went off and practiced this. And about a month later, his mother phoned up really enthusiastic. We've taken him back to the dentist. He's had more improvement just practicing that simple thing than eight or nine years of therapy and she said if we can carry on like this we can avoid the operations because it got to a point he was coming into teenage years if they didn't fix it or it didn't come right now they were going to take a quarter of an inch out of each side of his jaw to bring rather they couldn't get the maxilla to come forward so second best they were going to operate the jaw and move the jaw back or take a quarter of an inch so the chin came back. And the dentist said, if he can carry on like that, he's not going to need the operation. And she told me exactly what he needed. She said, you know, this all needs to come forwards and open sideways. So we worked with the maxilla to bring it forwards and to open it sideways and it opened and then one night he was doing it and something really weird happened it just something just did that it just happened and i've never seen that again since but it just opened and rather than this moon-shaped face his mum phoned up and said he's got a roman nose now he's actually come forwards and opened up forwards and his jaw it's come level with his jaw, you know, bit by bit, but then suddenly, and I think it may have been because he had light orthodontics. He had baby, like just not wires, but elastic. And I think that elastic combined with the breathing just brought it all open forward. So it was in line. And now she said, that is brilliant, but his jaw is now held medially and this is all open can you open his jaw so we worked with because there is a sideways motion it's not just up and down there's this opening to sides and i can show that but it takes a long time to actually show how that happens but it physically is happening so i showed him this sideways motion and he went to the dentist four weeks later and his whole jaw had aligned with the maxilla, the teeth were aligned. He was an oboe player and he could never do it properly before. Now he could just play the oboe and he flourished. Playing. He never came back. I don't think he, he didn't enjoy holistic stuff. You know, he coined these phrase, I don't know, hippie, hippie crystal gazers, something like that he didn't enjoy that arena but once that was fixed you know i'd see them around in the town and they would just please just punch it never it, it, it somehow you know for me it's kind of a miracle and a lot of it is that he was a young boy you know it's different kind of a 12 13 year old adolescent to someone 30 40 or 50 where it's really set in place but and um, Jeremy Gilby, the, not the founder, but is the principal of the um, Sutherland College of, Oste of Cranial Osteopathy, he learned it. And it was interesting teaching it to him because a lot of that faculty mm -hmm. came to a meeting and they taught it in their college mm -hmm. after I taught them. They passed it on in their college. But they were sitting around just, mm -hmm. And then was uh, teaching the hologram, and one by one, they, they kind of got the feeling, and it started working. Saying, so "Whoa, what is this?" And they could feel the effect. And after that, whenever he called type two occlusion, something like that, it's a, a 
where this is pulled back he would just he would work on them but he would send them to me so i could teach them the breathing so they could carry it on between the appointments so the dentist who sent him work with it in her dental surgery because she felt after what happened to Gwillem that there probably wasn't necessary to put people in full braces you might want it to straighten teeth but to actually naturally balance the bones as long as you weren't in too much of a rush this breathing could do it over a period of time the cranial osteopathic school were teaching it and were interested in it more recently i taught the um assistants and a lot of the graduates from a different craniosacral school about how all the cranial fluids work because i see it differently yeah. and that's what i'm teaching this weekend I, i've got a different view i don't believe the way it's shown in the books is correct and i will be showing that all this Sunday. And if people miss it, there'll be recordings of that. I taught them for one and a half years, the whole makeup of how this fluid is working through that. Because I think you can, um, I'm against people trying to do it in a certain way to fix something here, because that's your will imposing yourself on a natural phenomenon. I'm much more about just letting it breathe and it will start finding its own blocks and balances and how that engages with the cranium. Because if this is out, it's actually the center of it isn't here. The center of it is here and in the spine. And it's much better you can breathe through that center until that comes right. And then that will extend forwards into the mouth. Because if you just fix this by forcing it, then that fixes the rest of it in a wrong position. Mm -hmm. So you need to come from the center and let it flow out. And the cranial fluids are part of that. The spine is part of that. The cranium, everything. And the breath goes through everything. So I'm not, I wouldn't want people to try to use this in a way, oh, I'm going to do this, this, and this, but just to let it breathe. And as it breathes, it will start adjusting. The bones will start growing in different ways. And over a period of time, it will just keep on opening. And then fundamentally, you improve your health, you improve your well-being, you improve your position. If you were just, you know, a lot of osteopaths don't like orthodontics because you force this into position and it has a different effect through all the different areas of your body. So... I am about opening up through this, but I come from a very natural place. It isn't allopathic. It's trying to fix something. It's just get everything breathing and naturally that will open. And the baby uses this after birth. Everything is squished and all over the place. Suckling brings that all back into a line. And us as adults, holographic breathing, we can do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... Um, as adults, we can do the same thing and heal everything at once. It's a very holistic view. Uh, but ironically, if this is such a light bone, this area right here, and people can really get the feeling there, then they'll be convinced that it works. Because once they can feel the cranial motion, once they can feel it in their jaws, um, then they'll be hooked. They'll understand that their breath is intimately tied to everything else. Of course it is. Um, I th uh I'm um, sorry. Well, I mean, if you're interested, I mean, I can do it on my kind of free ones, or if you want, I can do it with you. You know, we can do this initial one, and then on another one, I can teach the widening of it, this whole area through the body. I can teach working with the palate and through the body. I can teach, you know, in just separate ways, and each one holistic. So, you know, if, if you want to take it further, we can do that. It's not a problem. I think right now, people who have not experienced the breathing yet, a lot of the community has already, actually. Um, if they have not, I think it's time to teach them so that they can experience it themselves. Brilliant. All right. So shall I teach how to do it then? I think everyone watching <laughs> would really love to know. Yes. All right. Really well, let's, 
let's uh, so i'll just start okay all right so i will speak as if i'm speak i'll be teaching you karan but i will also be speaking to the whole audience and everybody watching the video so i'm going to start explaining this but to start off with let's while I'm explaining this, I want people to start by putting their tongue on the roof of the mouth just while they're listening to me. Now, the tip of the tongue is close to or touching the front teeth. And then the upper surface of the tongue is on the roof of the mouth. Now, over a period of time, this will get relaxed, you know, over months or however long, this will get relaxed and cover the whole roof of the mouth. But to start off with, you just want as much of the tongue on the roof of the mouth as is comfortable. You don't want to push it there or strain it. You just want the tip of the tongue close to or touching the front teeth, the upper surface of the tongue on the roof of the mouth, and as much of the upper surface of the tongue on the roof of the mouth as feels comfortable. The lips are relaxed and closed all of the time through this so through the whole time the lips are relaxed and closed the tongue is relaxed and on the roof of the mouth now i'm going to describe the motion of the jaw but i don't want people to do that yet i just want want you to have unless you already know holographic breathing just have the jaw relaxed become used to the lips closed and the tongue on the roof of the mouth now along with that what we're going to learn is on the in-breath the jaw very gently opens and on the out breath the jaw very gently closes now this is just two or three millimeters quarter of an inch it's not a big motion so that is all there is to holographic breathing or the initial part of it the lips relaxed and closed the upper surface of the tongue on the roof of the mouth the breath through the nose on the in-breath, the jaw is very gently opening. On the out-breath, the jaw is very gently closing. Now, if you just try and do that, it will be a bit forceful. So I'm going to take you through a list of exercises just to get that going. Um, what I will do is I'll just demonstrate it for a few breaths so you can see how subtle it is that the jaw is just very small movement movement the lips stay closed all of the time and the tongue stays on the roof of the mouth So very, very quickly, you move into a deeply relaxed and meditative space. Now, what I want you to do is just so that you can notice that you can keep your lips closed and move the jaw, just have your lips closed and gently moving your jaw up and down. That's it. It's just like chewing or eating. So it's very easy to do that. OK, so that's brilliant. You've got the experience that that is possible, because quite often when we get into it you can say, oh, it's not possible to move your jaw and have the lips closed, but absolutely possible. So I think that's it. Can I take my headphones off to teach this? That's all right. Yeah. Wave at me if you want to say something. Um, and then I'll put them back on afterwards. All right, so now I'm going to take you through the exercises to learn holographic breathing. Closing your eyes, and if you know holographic breathing, just doing holographic breathing. Otherwise, just have the lips closed and relaxed, the tongue relaxed on the roof of the mouth, the breath through the nose. 
and we're going to bring in some resources to start off with. So sending a smile, sending some energy to the earth and allow the earth to say hello back. Allow yourself to receive from the earth. Notice what that feels like through your body and through your energies. And then sending a smile, sending some energy to the higher self, the beneficial energies, the beneficial energy, any channels or anyone, higher beings that you may work with. And let the higher self and the beneficial energies say hello back. Allow yourself to receive from the higher self and the beneficial energies. <clears throat> and now, just asking the earth, the higher self and the beneficial energies to be with you through the whole rest of this meditation and talk as your guide and healer. So we're going to start with some exercises to learn the holographic breathing. So the lips are relaxed and closed. The tongue is relaxed and on the roof of the mouth. So you probably become used to that now. The breath is through the nose. And just start by gently moving the jaw up and down. Just small amount, half a finger width few millimeters, just opening and closing the jaw, a bit like chewing. It's good to be seated for this. If you're learning it for the first time, it's good to be seated because it's very easy to fall asleep. So the jaw opening and closing with the breath. Sorry, the jaw opening and closing. Now, aligning that with the breath. So the jaw is opening. As the jaw is opening, you pull the breath in through the nose. As the jaw is closing, the breath comes out through the nose. So as you're opening the jaw, allowing the breath to draw in through the nose. As you close the jaw, allowing the breath to come out through the nose. So the lips stay closed all of the time. The tongue stays on the roof of the mouth. Notice it feels like a little bellow. So as the jaw opens, it's pulling the breath in through the nose. As the jaw is closing, it's expelling the breath out through the nose. Notice how it synchronizes with your breathing. You're opening the jaw, it draws the breath in. Closing the jaw, it expels the breath. Relax the back of the neck. Relax the back of the head. Relaxed, slow motion of the jaw. Now we're going to change the whole emphasis of that. We're going to now bring the emphasis to the breath and the jaw moves with the breath. So now that you're used to that movement, as the breath is coming in through the nose, the jaw relaxes open. As the breath is coming out through the nose, the breath, the jaw relaxes closed. So now the attention is on the breath in the nose and the jaw is moving with it. Notice how everything gets more relaxed and soft. You start moving into a deeply meditative place. Breathing in, the jaw relaxes open. Breathing out, the jaw relaxes closed. Relax the back of the neck. Relax the back of the head. 
as the jaw is closing, the teeth come together, but there's no pressure, they just float together. So breathing in, the teeth are separating, breathing out, they're floating back together and there's no pressure or they don't touch. They almost touch, but not quite. So the jaw never becomes fixed. It's always soft and relaxed. Breathing in, the jaw is opening. Breathing out, it's closing. Notice after a while, it just meshes with the breath and just feels like a memory that you know this movement and feeling from somewhere. Relax the back of the neck, relax the back of the head, the lips stay closed all of the time, the tongue stays on the roof of the mouth all of the time. As the chest is opening, the jaw opens with it. As the chest is closing, the jaw closes with it. Synchronizes with the breath. Notice how natural it feels. Notice there's no force. You start off with the attention in the jaw, but after a while you just move the attention to the body and the jaw is just lightly following the body and the breath. Breathing in, the chest is opening, the jaw is relaxing open. Breathing out, the chest is closing, the jaw is gently closing. And becoming aware of the abdomen, the abdomen opens, the jaw gently opens. As the abdomen closes, the jaw gently closes with it. Notice that in a very subtle way, there's no force, you're not trying to do anything, but in a very subtle way, all of the bones of the face have started to gently breathe and move with this subtle motion of the jaw and all of the bones and the cranium just moving in a very soft, subtle way. So it brings a new area to the breath. It brings a breathing motion of the breath through the whole skull. And that also starts moving down through the spine, the shoulder blades, the arms, the legs, the pelvis, this gentle, soft breathing motion starts moving through your whole body, it just becomes a whole body sensation. Just everything is very gently opening together and everything is very gently closing together. Notice how nice it feels. Notice how natural it feels. Not doing it in any kind of forceful way, but also notice how it feels like a very subtle form of suckling aligned with the breath and that you're not doing the suckling that just the motion of your breath is orchestrating that very gentle suckling motion in the mouth but it's everything it isn't just the mouth it's everything it started from the mouth but then it just becomes every bone, every cell, every vertebrae. Notice how you can feel inside your brain, all the cranial fluids, 
the energies. Cranial brain is 90% water, it's like the sea. Maxillary sinuses, if you become aware of those big sinuses in the maxilla, they relate to the cranial fluid. Notice you can feel your maxilla just gently opening on the in-breath and these maxillary sinuses opening and closing on the out-breath. And how that instantly drops back into your brain, you feel all the waters of your brain, the sea of your brain breathing. And all of those energies. How that travels down through your spine and out through all of the nerves. The cranial sea spreading through your whole brain spinal cord out through all of the nerves and it somehow connects with these big maxillary sinuses also you can feel it opening to the sides that they open to the sides and the sides of the cranium open to the sides on the in-breath and then close immediately on the out-breath breathing in opening out to the sides like a fish, fish's gills, opening on the in-breath, closing on the out-breath. The jaw is still going up and down, but this is this whole sideways motion of the breath as well that you can start feeling these much softer energetic qualities of the cranial sea through the whole brain and around the whole brain. And that spreads out through all the nerves in the face, back into the maxilla, into the jaw, into the eyes, and through the whole body. Gently breathing. Every cell in your body starting to breathe. Notice as if every little cell in your body opening on the in breath. Every cell in your body closing on the out breath. It just something happens. You just move into a new arena. You move into a deeply resourcing space where everything starts to heal automatically and softly. You can heal your brain, you can heal the cranial fluid. And it gives you a connection to the earth. Notice how you can connect with the earth below you. The heavens above you. Gently breathing with the holographic breathing. Everything healing, everything softening, every cell breathing. Now we're going to come back in about a minute. Uh, just letting everything soften, everything become easy. And when you feel ready, gently allowing yourself to come back.
start off speaking gently here, give everyone a chance to come back slowly. Let's not back into it. Let yourself uh, integrate what you've been taught here. Um, I'll share a little bit of my experience. Um, I did feel immensely through the Maxola. It is amazing how light that bone is. And I heard a popping. I held, I heard and felt a popping, which has been happening to me quite often, um, which makes me have no doubt, especially with what I've seen happen as well in my own face, that we can resolve this in adults. I would like to share the other part of my experience that people at home, perhaps uh, we could have warned you about, but like now you understand, uh, you feel the blockages as well. You, with through this breathing, you begin to feel how tightly wound up your body really is. And it can be painful to understand that as well. The project that we're going to be doing going forward will be to ensure all of us together to ensure that we can get those results in adults and to unwind your patterns and unwind your body. And Martin, um, for the people that are now for the first time probably noticing that their body is really tightened up, uh, do you have any advice for us? Don't try and fix it. Don't feel something. Say, oh, I've got to pull it this way or I've got to untighten it. Let it be. Let it be there and notice what it feels like. Most of our traumas, you know, there's not just a physical there's a, a dog barking. You may be able to hear it. Uh, he comes out whenever I'm teaching and barks. <laughs> he wants to join in. Um, so he's just here. Um, there's a psychological component to it. There's an emotional thing to it. It may have been from an emotional childhood experience. It may have been from a past life. It may be from an existential fear of something and it's resulting in a physical trauma or it may be a physical trauma from an injury but also with emotional things connected to it now the body has its own natural way with our mind to think oh we've got to fix it we've got to make it right but our body has its own natural way of unwinding and resolving traumas and that trauma if you are feeling it and you never felt it before you are already healing it because the first part of it is to be able to feel it and if you're feeling it it's already finding ways of resolving say you've had an injury say you've had a physical injury say you fell over so there's a physical impact and that injures part of the body then somebody laughs at you and say you idiot now there's an emotional thing to it and then they tell you you're an idiot so now there's a mental i'm an i'm an idiot as well so that trauma has suddenly taken on a whole different thing mm -hmm. but and it's become solid it has become tight now through this, did you notice you can feel all the different parts of your body in a way you can't normally, if you, if you notice that. Good. So you can feel these areas that become tight and all that really needs to happen. Because the, the, the thing about trauma is it's become tight in some way. As soon as it starts breathing in a way, that trauma is already on its way out because it's no longer a tightness, it's moving. But in that movement, you may start feeling the upset, you might start feeling the mental things and self doubt, or you know, the way you talk to yourself about things, you may feel the emotions and you may feel the physical restriction, but just 
getting it to breathe is all you have to do. And you don't force that. You just open, okay, it's starting to breathe. And because we're in a state of meditation in holographic breathing, that is the perfect place to integrate and resolve trauma is the space of meditation. So because you're in that space, but you have to go slowly, because if you go too quickly, you just re-traumatize yourself. So all the time with holographic breathing, if you start feeling it and you just carry on slowly over a period of time, bit by bit, that, that will resolve. Everyone's coming to join in now. People are honking their horns as well. <laughs> Um, for anyone at home feeling frustrated as well, if you start realizing how body, how wound up your body is, it can be quite frustrating. And I want you to know that there is a project coming up um, where we as a community will make sure and we'll be working with Martin. And I want you to know as well, if right now the, the holographic breathing really resonated with you and um, you're like, where can I do more of this? There's a link. Make sure you go down there and bookmark it because there's a lot of free seminars. And Martin goes a lot deeper into things. If, if you're a cranial sacral therapist, uh, now's the part really for you to listen in because this Saturday, Martin is doing... Sun, sun, Sunday. Sunday. Upcoming yeah. Sunday. At what time? Uh, it's 7 p.m. UK time till 9 p.m. UK time. The whole town just woke up, eh? <laughs> yeah, they all... The police are here. The dog's here. People are honking their horns everyone's here <laughs> to circle back just for a moment um how about the personality changes because a lot of those things that are tied up in our bodies those are egoic as well right they, they form our personalities and our identities so as people unwind those um did you see a change in yourself and have you seen a change in others oh massive massive i mean th that young lad for for instance um he noticed he gets very upset very quickly and nobody could be with him and he had a reputation for getting upset and stomping around and his parents didn't have a way of resolving it but he was quite intelligent he learned that when he's upset like that he doesn't want to listen to his parents but he would just go up to his bedroom they do holographic breathing and he would just become a different person. They said he completely changed. His whole personality changed, especially as that all opened up. A whole sharpness and niggliness com completely disappeared. Um, this is not just a kind of psychological way of um, balancing and getting better. There's a spiritual element to this and it will clear past lives it will clear childhood memories one thing i really noticed which i think is pivotal pivotal for for most people is i think i was suckled for a week something like that which isn't really long enough for baby i realized that just in the first six months of holographic breathing it was sating what i hadn't got as for suckling also it just makes me deeply relaxed all of the time uh, the main things i get from people is they just say oh, all, all my physical problems just seem to start getting better but there's also this energetic and spiritual side which is almost a bit like taking drugs it just says, wow, that is really nice. And this is a lot to do with it starts releasing. I've also got the sunlight. I've got a little window up there and it, the sun is coming through the trees on my face. <laughs> it's, only, it's only about this. <laughs> Perfect timing. <laughs> and it just <laughs> arrived here, right, right in my mouth and maxilla, look. It's, yeah. look here we go. <laughs> And 
it starts what we work a lot with the pelvis and the pelvis relates into all of this and that potency all the different bones are to do with that sexual potency in different ways and all the different organs that starts releasing and it comes up through the body as a healing energy and starts adjusting and realigning the spine and working through the organs and then that works through the brain and this is a bit like a high and at a certain point when that properly works through the, it happened to me about eight years ago it gets to a point and it just starts going through the brain and it doesn't stop and this is a spiritual change of your life because as that energy goes through the brain the, the brain is a the anatomy of the brain is a physical representation of your mind of your ego if you want of your intellect and when it goes through there you can no longer be that you actually sit back and you enter this very deeply meditative space where all of our physical ailments all of our different holds emotional aspects mental aspects the whole thing on that level is held in the mind and we start off by trying to fix ourselves and this emotion that and this when it goes through the mind you realize you are no longer fixing yourself you are the problem and as it goes through your mind you drop back from associating with what you call the ego or, or the mind you're more viewing it and in that there is an immense potential to heal everything um, but at that stage the emphasis isn't to heal everything because it just becomes very spiritual there's a much stronger connection to the higher self and the beneficial we've got another man outside fixing something now you might hear him doing stuff as well it's all going on so it, it just covers all all areas um as far as i was i'm concerned I, I would have died from lyme's disease so every day since then has been a gift as painful as it may be because i still get tired um but it's been a gift and what i realized after a while was all i really wanted to do was actually contribute and my contribution is this holographic breathing and all the workings of it so i'm just happy doing that and it, it i'm alive from it my body continually gets better and my spine continually strengthens its energy keeps getting stronger so i'm kind of happy in a way so but also i can feel myself spiritually changing so there's this really nice feeling is i want to live much longer because i want to transcend and transmute and evolve to the best of my ability through this lifetime and then next lifetime you know we're not just clearing ourselves for this lifetime you in a way prepping yourself for the next lifetime so there's that whole side of it for me as well yeah i, I like to convey to people too that a lot of the issues that are around you as well they also start resolving themselves in many ways um and with the frustration and the knowledge of it, they say the cure for the pain is in the pain and you could if you're listening to this right now you could have gone a lot longer in your life without realizing you had all these subconscious patterns and all this pain and stuff going on so it's painful to realize it but now that you do you can start the work of because imagine if you didn't know and you, you would just keep repeating in cycles but now uh, that is actually the reason I called the project the Karna Dharma. It was just something that, that the Karna is the character in the Mahabharata who decides to go through everything, decides to work through the karma. And that's where it came to me. Um, I want everyone listening to know, though, that there is a community here. There is Martin Jones. Um, 
you have a lot of support as well because you know if you had come to this realization a long time ago maybe you're sitting in the woods in a village <laughs> like who's going to guide you? Uh, you you have guidance now and you have a community that can support you uh, through this yeah. project and also martin has his own community as well he's been teaching cranial sacral therapists and professionals largely for a long time so if you are a cranial sacral therapist um i think you need to go and look at those because he's rewriting the book martin could you tell us a little bit more about that about how it's not rewriting the book but the the books have not portrayed the cranial c and how that works correctly and you're going to be speaking more about this on sunday um I, I I can't actually show it now. I can talk about it. I mean, it sounds a bit um when I my view, my view of the cranial fluid and that whole anatomy was from my cranial training. And I did two. I did two full-length cranial sacral therapy trainings. And it was that there's this fluid around the cranium. And there's this fluid in the ventricles and there's this fluid around the spine and then a very thin layer of fluid down through the center of the spine. And then that is that, that is called the cranial fluid and that is what you're working with. When I started doing holographic breathing, I started becoming aware of that fluid, but instantly it wasn't just that fluid around the cranium in the ventricles it spread it was everywhere it was through the whole brain i haven't got a picture i might try and get a picture for you in a minute um, but it went through everything it went through the whole spine and it spread out through the nerves which is a huge no-no in the books everything is contained within the dura around everything and it doesn't go out through the nerves and you've got the cranial fluid and then you've got the brain so i just thought well and as that happened for me i could feel the toxins literally releasing out my brain traveling down and traveling out through the nerves so the anatomy that i knew says that experience is impossible but i was getting better with it and i thought i don't care what the books say I'm going to continue to do this as an experience because I can feel that releasing. I feel the toxins going and I am definitely getting better. Years later, when I started teaching, I thought, well, I better check this out. So I started looking up. And first thing I looked up was the cranial fluid. And then I looked up, well, what is this fluid that's actually in the brain? Which is called the interstitial fluid. Mm -hmm exactly the same thing produced in exactly the same way and i had cranial fluid is the most refined fluid in the body that's what i was taught but that didn't mean anything to me well, what is the constituent parts of these two fluids both of them 99 percent water then the one percent is glucose oxygen salt and then the point zero 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 one percent is different stuff so they're identical i thought they're the same you know and then i started looking what is to stop this flowing out through the nerves nothing there's nothing to stop that flowing out through the nerves mm. and then i started looking at the myelin the the myelin sheath because i experienced it traveling through the myelin sheath yeah. i looked into the myelin sheath described as a sheath of fatty a fatty sheath to protect the nerve its coils of cranial fluid is the most beautiful cell and as i looked at this i realized these were making capillaries to produce cranial fluid and to let it travel in capillaries out through the body so i thought have i gone mad you know how can what is being said in the anatomy books and all those scientists be wrong and me be right. Um, but I started painting pictures of it because I was thinking this is so weird. And then I was saved by the, um, because I thought I'm just going nutty here. I was saved by that the same people, the same osteopathic school that I taught or showed holographic brains. I was speaking to Jeremy Gilby. I said, look, 
I see the cranial fluid all as one fluid and traveling out through the nerves. And I feel a bit nutty because the anatomy books say it's completely different. He said, yeah, we, we agree with you. We teach it as that, but they are the only school doing that that I know of. All the other osteopathic schools, all the cranial sacral schools, they teach it as from the books. And I look, started looking at the fundamental principles behind it. And once you look at the fundamental principles, it is 100% absolutely impossible for it to work in the way that it's saying it's working in the anatomy. And the people who first made those pictures hundreds of years ago, they knew it. And ever since then, it has been portrayed in that way. And by, I can't go into it, but the blood brain barrier, what, what does that give you a picture of? For me, the picture was nothing can get into the brain and nothing can get out. So you can't get the toxins out. It's a myth. It's, it, it's how the cranial fluid is made both in the brain and in the thing. The, the way that myelin sheath is described stops people having the experience of it. it. The way it's produced, one, it's impossible. It divides the brain into this fluid that doesn't work. It doesn't do anything and goes on an impossible journey. And solid brain, it just divides and isolates the whole thing. And when you have that picture, you can't transcend. If you're viewing your brain as that, it's very hard to actually get a proper connection and evolve. In the webinars, it will be recording, so if people miss the webinar, and I'll be running more, taking it further, there will still be the recordings. I'm not going to say my way of seeing it is right, but I've had enough of it now. I, I am almost beside myself that they are still teaching this in cranial schools. Because if you you understand the fundamental principles underlying it is impossible in for instance now i haven't got the things to describe it but one of the main principles in your body the blood comes out of the heart very strong very powerful travels out through the whole body through thousands of miles of little capillaries and then the interstitial fluid comes out of the blood that's got oxygen nutriments goes to the cells, they all get life, produces carbon dioxide. Now, going back to the heart, it's going really slowly. And so the venous blood can't take as much. It's moving out quickly. The venous blood's going much slower, so it can't. The rest of it comes back through the lymph. The lymph is four times the size of the venous blood or the arterial blood. The same is true of the brain. The art, you've got these strong, the aorta or whatever this rising thing is, comes up, the blood goes to the brain very quickly. Powerful, it goes, I think it's 400 miles of capillaries in the brain. It's really tiny, only one blood cell can go through it at a time. The whole pressure is down. The venous blood coming out of the brain sometimes is even going backwards. So it can't take all of that fluid back. So in the body, there's four times as much lymph. In the brain, there is no accountability. There is no, we don't know where that fluid goes to. Four times the size of the arterial blood. It's like saying of your body, we don't know that lymph exists. That same thing is said of the brain. But for some reason, I don't know why, nobody questions it. And I'm kind of beside myself. Well, look, that blood's going in. It's going out of venous blood. You've got four times the size of that that is not accounted for. How does that get back? I'm oh, sorry, I'm on my little box now. How is that going to get back to the heart? Yeah. You look at the nerves, they're about the sum of all of those nerves coming. They're about four times the volume 
of the venous blood or the arterial blood leaving thing. It's the same. There's no reason why it can't flow out through those nerves. The myelinated glial cells, these capillaries, for me, they chain together and they pull it out through capillary action. And that, they, for me, I'll show it in the thing how they create, how the cranial, and I've had to change the names because if you use their names, it pulls you into that paradigm. So I've called, rather than cranial fluid and interstitial fluid, the cranial fluid in the brain is filtered through the epidymal cells. The cranial fluid in the ventricles is created through the endothelial cells and the cranial fluid in both is produced in exactly the same way. So I've called it the epi fluid for the ventricles, the endo fluid for the brain and where they mix and merge together the cranial C. Then the myelinated glial cells in the same way, they've got tight junctions. They produce cranial fluid inside themselves and that also travels out through the whole nerve so you don't have to believe me i won't say one thing in that webinar that cannot be substantiated in the books i'm just saying from the anatomy shown in the books their theory of how it works is impossible but not only is it impossible people having an image they don't know what it is they've got this image of the blood brain barrier that's unhealthy. That is an unhealthy image to have of your brain. Having an image of the myelin sheath, that's not very healthy for someone who's having trouble in that area. Having the image that it's all contained and doesn't move through the body and is isolated isn't healthy. So it's not just a matter of it's wrong for me. It's a matter of it's unhealthy and it's unhealthy on a global level. And I really, actually, it's not just I want to show how I feel it. <laughs> I want it. I want a proper discussion. And maybe your forum is a good place. Yeah. You know, when when you said, oh, I like that. And I thought that'd be great if we could have a discussion of this on your forum and have all the osteopaths, all the cranial sacral therapists, Anybody who knows anything about anatomy, looking at the real underlying principles of what's happening there and actually properly bringing out that whole topic into the light. Because for me, I don't know if it's been done intentionally. I think that is stopping the or slowing down at the very least the evolution of mankind that if i if i brought out an anatomy book it's actually how the ventricles work say they work say well the blood the the interstitial fluid comes out of the body in the wrist and somehow goes all the way up through the arm and then goes back into the venous blood still with all of its oxygen still with all of its nutrients and goes back to the heart stopping the interstitial fluid they're going into it, which used it up and not using it in the wrist, you'd say, well, that's a crap anatomy book. But that's exactly how it's described in the brain. The mm. fluid comes out of the ventricles, it's full of oxygen, it's full of glucose, it travels all the way down, all the way down the spine, all the way up the spine, all the way up, and leaves through the venous blood that's meant to be for the brain without actually <laughs> feeding anything or doing anything. And everyone believes it. Well, the cranial therapy. Yeah, no, you, and you have to know the, un, I'm sorry, I'm ranting, but I'm passionate about this. It's just built in me over this time. And I, I, I just want it to be known. <laughs> yeah, that definitely sparked passion. And there's a lot of people listening that are going to want to be there Sunday not only to hear you logically lay it out because a lot of everyone here understands that like the logic of the medical system or the way it's been recently is not there um but not only to experience it understand it logically but to have it enter their experience as it's entered your experience what's going on there yeah that'd be great thank you for letting me say that is there i'm a bit like a pressure cooker at the minute <laughs>
<laughs> Martin has been doing this for a, a time. There's a backlog of recordings, but I suggest you catch them live Sunday and make sure you check out those seminars. And uh, Martin will have on Sunday, like images and all that ready to go. If I get provided some here, I'll put them over the video. Um, I think Martin, you also had like a, a model for, to, for people to visualize the movement of the skull and everything like that. Um, I'll show that. Um, it may take a little while, but because I've seen I think, you... I think they're going to have to come back later for our next video in order to see that, or they can go into your backlog of videos where you do explain it. Yeah. All right. So you, you don't want me to do that now. No. You'll, we're going to leave something for the next one, and I can't... Yeah, wait. leave something for the next... Um, because if you want, we can do it in a different way and have it as a free webinar for people and... I can just go into that side of it in far more depth. With my webinars and the recorded stuff, there is a um, spiritual channel comes through when I teach. And listening to the recordings, quite often people just pass out cold and can't actually stay with it. That doesn't happen so much with the webinars because you're in it and part of it is far better to be part of the energy and the energy coming through for the whole effect. So it is better to actually arrive and be physically in the webinar. Also important to arrive at the beginning because I'll be going through the holographic breathing and that experience at the beginning. That is on the last page. My website is holographicbreathing.com. The last page is free webinars and videos and the link to that webinar is on that page and there's five or six other recordings of free webinars there as well that people can view the whole holistic body healing uh, we'll work through this as a project together and i want people to go and check out martin because martin has made models on his website that if, if you've had any trouble at all understanding how the cranial rhythm works and how it goes through your spine, um, having a visualization for it. We'll, we'll do that on another video, but if yeah. you, you want to know, you should go check out Martin's channel right now. Yeah. Check out the website. He's got that all up there. And we'll get I'll it. Put up, I'll put up, it isn't on there at the minute, but I'll find that video you're talking about where I go through that and I'll put it as an extra bit where it showed the spine and the cranium moving i'll put that on on that page as well yeah we'll, we'll make sure to keep keep talking to you and keep you in with the community because they're going to have a lot of questions for you i have a lot of questions for you as well uh and they're going to come yeah. over the months and years as we yeah. uh, we're really i really do think we're going to get correction in adults i've seen it in myself and you saw it in yourself as well you're older when you got the correction there and healed Lyme's disease as well. Um, uh, it's not just him, other people um, grinding your teeth while you're asleep. Very few people who practice holographic breathing for a quarter of an hour before they go to sleep normally completely eradicates that. If you practice holographic breathing en enough, it will automatically start working in the background. And, you can actually, while you're asleep, sleep, stop grinding your teeth because you naturally start moving the jaw. People who have had all sorts of TMJ misalignments, they all just say over a period of time, it just corrects and corrects until it just comes in to, to the right place. And this all relates into the cranial base. I'd love to show you just one thing. Let me just show you one thing. I've got me, this is all the different energies. I'm just going to take this skull apart a bit and I'll just show you how the palate and cranium fit in to the cranial base. No, like there is a, it's always at the risk of sounding like uh, nutters when we talk about the fact that this can fix everything. If you fix your breathing, you can fix everything. And the people will have the idea in their head that, no, you can't just fix everything. You can only fix one thing at a time. Indeed, you can fix everything. So please go ahead. So this is how you see nicely how the palate and all the facial bones, they connect into 
This is normally it's talked of as two bones, but past the age of 13, this is one bone. And the cranium fits really nicely into that. And as this, this all balances on the spine. Oops. Let's go put it on the spine. And as all of the muscles through the body are pulling down on the front, is breathing in, breathing out. And it bows this cranial bone like this, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in. That whole action through the face is amplified. So you get this gentle breathing through your whole cranial base and through your spine, breathing in breathing out, breathing. So it spreads from your mouth through the whole face, through the whole body, and then the whole body starts going, and it comes from the body through the cranial base and out through the face, and it all meshes together into one breath. Yeah, it's, it's the cranial base movement there, and um, I, I think it does merge into one bone. Um, yeah. And we are going along with the assumption, at least in our project, is that the body can heal whatever it needs to. So if we get a lot of movement and flexion going in that area between the SBJ joints, if it feels like it needs to demineralize and decalcify and open up again to cause growth, we're hoping to cause that in adults and fix the skull and expand the skull, expand the jaws. Oh, all, all the time, this once this is breathing, then any because these were four joints it was a, a joint across here a joint across here and a joint here uh, and it's just arbitrary in a way that this has been called a separate thing but it never has been a separate bone it wasn't a joint in the first place it was cartilage joined into both bones and very fine but there's all sorts of little alignments through all of it and through the bones themselves and as it breathes all of those little alignments just keep on adjusting and moving and adjusting and moving and opening. And this opens your whole karma mm. far more than just far, far more than just physical misalignments or upsets. It's your whole spiritual life, your whole emotional life, the way your mind works. The whole thing is interacting into this. Yeah, I, I want everyone right now to remember there's a Sunday webinar. The link will be below or around this video somewhere to go sign up for that and to check out the website. The Karna Dharma Project's launching and also the Great Work Forum, which uh, Martin had mentioned, which will always be a free community forum to discuss these ideas. Hmm. And I, I, will, I will put pointers in my newsletter to my people as well. To, I'll put this video there and pointers to your project and, and that site as well. Yeah. Thank you, Martin. I, I am. I mean, thank you. I mean, I know I reached out for you, but thank you for really welcoming me into this. It seems like we're so aligned in so many different ways. So um, yeah. I, I'm always get when somebody understands. I've been shouting this from the rooftops for twenty years. It's only now that I can get an international viewer as through webinars through all the countries that that it's growing and it of years of just working in church halls <laughs> with few people to it opening up and then people like yeah this is good it just really I, my whole heart goes oh yes thank you <laughs> yeah the, the, the time has come now for sure yeah, brilliant. okay brilliant. Martin, we'll speak to you again later so good seeing you thank you mate all right wonderful there is a pandemic in modern societies of constricted jaws, constricted skulls, and narrow airways. This is symptomized by weak jaw lines, sunken cheekbones, under eye circles, sleep apneas, snoring, back and joint pain, and a range of hormonal issues. Ancient human skulls and less modernized society skulls they don't have impacted wisdom teeth or crooked teeth. Their jaws are wide, their airways are large, and their backs are straight. And they're not depressed and anxious. You see, the patterns of depression and anxiety, fears, doubts, all the past traumas, those are stored in the tissues and the fascial connections in your body. And in modern societies, 
those have nowhere to go. They don't release. And so they constrict our bodies, causing the back pains, causing the jaw issues, causing the constrictions and the torsions in the skull because they interrupt your breathing pattern. When I was a very angry young man, I used to have crippling back spasms. They would put me out for days. It makes sense, right? When you get angry, your muscles contract. So that chronic tension, which in Sanskrit is called sankocha, which means contraction, is the root of what we call the feeling of the ego. So that in other words, this feeling of tightness is the physical referent for the psychological image of ourselves. When I let go of that anger, my back was fixed. As I continued to let go of the past traumas and the past egoic patterns that I had, my body and my skull are coming back into alignment without any outside adjustment. This Karna Dharma project, it will unwind your body and your mind at the same time. And it's going to do this by restoring your natural, unrestricted breathing pattern. Do you think that you breathe with your diaphragm? Most people do. No. You breathe with your whole body. Your whole body breathes at once. Your psoas muscle, it pulls down on your diaphragm. And your SEM muscle, it pulls up on your chest. In fact, every muscle is a breathing muscle, all the way down to the individual cells. You're just unconscious of it. Your breathing and your posture are the two subconscious things that you can make conscious. We're going to wake those muscles up again as a hatha yoga and as a pranayama to dissolve your restrictions and your physical patterns and your mental patterns. This is life changing, but it requires a lot of work. So you should start now.